Those of us who remember the 1980s remember the dark fears of a horrible, ravaging disease that claimed so many young lives. For years, we wondered if there would ever be a way to stop the spread of AIDS. Even as more treatment drugs became available, HIV continues to infect 50,000 people each year in this country. So you would think the arrival of a new drug, almost guaranteed to prevent HIV infection, would be all over the news. But a drug that does just that has very quietly come onto the market, and hardly anyone is taking it. America Tonight's Adam May now with a closer look at the drug and why even some of the people most at risk are reluctant to use it. Damon Jacobs says this little blue pill has completely changed his sex life. And it's not the little blue pill you might be thinking of. The pill is Truvada, part of a new class of drugs called PrEP that prevents HIV infection 99% of the time if taken as directed. Jacobs, a therapist in New York City, says he takes the pill every single day. It was a game changer for me, spending the first two decades of my sexual life constantly living with the fear of knowing I could become HIV positive. PrEP is pre-exposure prophylaxis, which means you're trying to prevent infection. It blocks the ability of that pathogen, in this case HIV, from reproducing itself. Dr. Anthony Fauci, one of the nation's foremost HIV experts, is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. He says PrEP is an important step forward. We found out in clinical trials that if you give this one pill of two drugs every day to an uninfected person, you can very dramatically diminish the likelihood that that person will be infected. We know that PrEP works. We need to implement to get more people to use it. Dr. Fauci has been on the front lines of the battle against AIDS ever since the beginning. I first started taking care of patients in 1981. We, we had our first drug in 1987. That's six years. We had our first effective combination of drugs in 1996. So I went a lot of years taking care of of a lot of patients, almost all of whom died before we had effective therapy. I came out in the late 80s, early 90s, and lived in San Francisco at the time where knowing people with AIDS and loving people with AIDS meant losing people to AIDS. Any partners? Certainly I was aware that people I had been intimate with were there one year and the next year you hear like, oh, so-and-so died last year. God, what's it like to hear that? Strangely enough, when it happens enough times, I think I just kind of became numb. It just seemed like it was going to be this never-ending thing that I was going to have to be coping with for my entire life. Can you imagine if PrEP was around back then? I can't think of anybody who has died who wouldn't have taken PrEP if they had had the option to do so. Now people do have the option, but not many are taking it. Fewer than 2,000 patients filled prescriptions in the last two years, according to data from over half the pharmacies in the country. Leading the charge against it, surprisingly, some AIDS activists. The multinational AIDS Healthcare Foundation has been vehemently fighting PrEP for the last two years. In 2012, its members urged the FDA not to approve the drug. At this time, there simply is not enough evidence to establish safety and efficacy, not enough evidence to unleash PrEP into wide-scale use. We believe that, you know, based on our experience being the largest AIDS organization in the world and providing care to 300,000 people worldwide for over 27 years in many, many countries, is that the vast majority of people who take PrEP will not be able to remain adherent. If they're not adherent, there's the potential that the risk of HIV uh, infection increases rather than decreases. In other words, people on PrEP will stop using condoms, forget to take the pill, and become infected with HIV. Early studies did show that while PrEP was highly effective if taken every day, less than half of patients took it consistently. Dr. Fauci says you have to put that in perspective. Those people are likely the people who would not be giving any protection anyway. So I think you don't want to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. 
Now, Fauci's agency is funding clinical trials to look at adherence rates among real patients who elect to take the drug, not just paid participants. Sarit Golub is overseeing the New York trial. Over 95% of our patients report no problems taking the pills. In our first four months of enrolling, we already have a waiting list of 90 people, and we've enrolled 120 so far. Why are people so interested in trying this? I mean, I think it's a really exciting new strategy for preventing HIV, and it's been so long since we've had a breath of fresh air in um, HIV prevention. Folks are concerned that all of a sudden individuals are going to go out and start having a lot of condomless sex because they have this uh, pill. It's akin to some of the negative concern that happened over the oral contraceptives when those were first made available to women. This idea that if we make this pill available to women, all of a sudden they'll start to go wild in some way. So I think that has been one concern that really has not borne out. I think there's a big difference between an unplanned pregnancy uh, and acquiring a potentially fatal disease. And there are adherence problems, I assume, even with, uh, with birth control, there are unplanned pregnancies. So again, I don't think the analogy holds. Why is there such a difference of opinion within the community as to how to tackle this? Well, I think that in the whole area of HIV prevention, there has always been disagreement. For example, when we first developed proper therapies for HIV. People would say, well, now that you have therapy for HIV, then people are going to be more careless and go out and get infected. That's true, some might, but I would rather have a therapy for HIV and save hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives, than having no therapy because some people, since therapy is available, might be practicing risky behavior are we at a tipping point? I think we are at a tipping point because if you see the acceleration of infections, it started to plateau, it's starting to go down. We have had the misfortune as a generation of seeing one of the most devastating pandemics in the history of mankind. Now we have the opportunity for the next generation, my children, to see that point where we can actually rid the world of this pandemic. That hope is now beginning to spread. We've made a lot of progress, but we're not going to be happy until we end the epidemic, and we believe we can. The morning of New York's Gay Pride Parade, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced his plan to end the AIDS epidemic in the city by 2020. He called for significantly lowering the price of PrEP Right now, it costs around $13,000 a year, but it is covered by Medicaid and most insurance. AIDS activists applauded the move. We think it's a very big deal because no government entity in the world has yet committed to ending HIV by a particular date, but we're going to have to move from a few thousand people who are now taking HIV prevention drugs to scores of thousands. They took that message to the streets, demanding drug maker Gilead further reduce its prices. Using Trivada for PrEP, for pre-exposure prophylaxis, have you ever heard of that? Damon Jacobs was there too, spreading the word about PrEP. It's actually daily medication an HIV negative person can take to stay HIV negative. Motivated by a recent encounter with a friend he hadn't seen in several months. He looked at me and his face just dropped and his eyes got watery and he said to me, I just tested positive four months ago. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me there was a way to stay negative? I would have taken it. And what could I say? Because he was right. I didn't tell him. I had failed him. The community, the prevention community had failed him. Nobody had gotten the message to this 24-year-old young man that PrEP was here, that he had a way of staying negative. Until we have a cure, we have this sort of daily pill. And that is when I really used my frustration and anger to get this message out there.
America Tonight's Adam May rejoins us here on the set. Adam, I guess we could not fail to notice that the man that you interviewed here was wearing a rather strong message on his shirt. Yeah, it said Truvada whore. Right. And that is a message that some people that support Truvada are wearing these t-shirts. The whole thing started uh, a couple of years ago when that drug first started uh, getting some notoriety. People started talking about it. There was a, a columnist that said if people take this medication, they'll become more promiscuous. Hmm. Well, that made a lot of people in the gay community very upset. They went ahead and they kind of took control of that term and they put it on their shirts and they believe that what they're doing is trying to get out the message about Travada. There are other people that wear that shirt that proudly say, look, this could be part of a new sexual revolution in the gay community after decades of being fearful during sexual intercourse that, that with Truvada, that fear could be disappearing. Really interesting stuff. I want to bring into the conversation now Dr. Anthony Fauci, whom we met in your piece as well. He is, of course, an immunologist and director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Dr. Fauci, we wanted to bring you back on because there really this is a fascinating thing that th this drug has been available, but it hasn't reached a, a more widespread audience. And I have to wonder why that is. I mean, is it not marketed, for example, to women? And is it treated differently in other countries than it is in the U.S.? Well, first of all, you have to go by what the studies that were shown. There have been a number of studies that shown in men who have sex with men, but also in serodiscordant couples and in some heterosexual couples who are at high risk, that taking Travada every day as a prevention or prophylaxis, a pre-exposure prophylaxis, is highly efficacious and works. There's no doubt about that. You have to take it, though, because the studies are very interesting to show that if you take it casually in the sense of sometimes you take it and sometimes you don't, or you take it only a minor uh, relative period of time as opposed to every day, that it doesn't have the high degree of efficacy. The other point that's important is that it should not be looked upon as a prevention modality in a vacuum by itself. So it shouldn't be used to replace or substitute for a condom, but it should be used to enhance the total efficacy of the prevention package. Dr. Fauci, I want to bring up another subject that's very important to the HIV community and to research being done as well, and that is the report that we're hearing about the little girl in Mississippi. She was believed to have been cured, or at least her HIV was uh, undetectable after some period of heavy treatment with antiretrovirals. And now, however, it turns out that in almost four years, it's come back. Can you talk a little bit about this? Is it a concern to you? Does it tell us anything about the future of being able to use these kinds of drugs for children infected at birth? Well, I don't think it's a concern to use it. The drugs need to be used. The question is, are you going to cure somebody? And by cure means that after a period of time, will you be able to withdraw the drug without the virus rebounding? So the pediatricians immediately treated the baby within 30 hours of birth, which gave it a big advantage to suppress that virus. They treated it for 18 months and then the mother stopped therapy, and then when they came back and examined the baby, there was no virus there. So the question was, should we just follow the baby and hopefully we could maybe have cured the baby by getting rid of what we call that reservoir of virus? And things were very encouraging for 27 months mm. with no therapy. And then the virus just came back and rebound, which meant it was always hiding there. So that tells us that the reservoir is very, very uh, difficult. It, it's recalcitrant. It doesn't get eradicated very well. What we're learning is that it's very, very hard to eradicate the virus because even if you treat as early as from the time a baby was born, they were still not successful. That's the sobering news. The encouraging news is that the baby went 27 months without any therapy and the virus did not reappear until the 27th month, which really tells us that there is some light ahead for us because if we could get better drugs, we may be able to suppress for an indefinite period of time. An important opportunity, important area for study. Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergies and Infectious Disease, as well as America Tonight's Adam May. Thank you both for being here. Thank you.